Hi, um, so this is uh, another video on the uh, G3 iBook. This is the Tangerine one. This machine has a lot of problems with booting. Um, it appears that when it's trying to uh, write to the hard drive, uh, it just kicks this machine out and it crashes. Um, reading from the hard drive isn't too much of an issue. Writing to the hard drive does become an issue. Um, so um, what I'm probably going to do, well not probably, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to replace the hard drive on this book. Now um, having seen uh, some good videos online, uh, specifically David Murray from the 8-bit uh, guy who did a video back in 2013 about the clamshell disassembly and reassembly, um, I have no doubt that this um, process is going to be pretty long and pretty traumatic. Um, this appears to be many, many, many bits that have to come off, almost to the extent that the entire machine is disassembled. So I'm going to follow David's video. Um, I'm going to uh, disassemble this and I'm going to be installing a replacement 40 gig IDE hard drive. Uh, some people have said to me, why didn't you put a flash or why don't you put a flash drive in? Um, mainly because these were six pounds each. Uh, a 64 gig or a 32 gig flash card plus the uh, associated holder with postage, etc. would probably be twice this price. Um, undoubtedly this drive will die in time but if it lasts another four or five years then what's the problem because this machine is it is not a, um, a full-time usage machine it's it's just a part of the collection part of the um, process of making videos that I'm doing uh, and this undoubtedly will be moved on to somebody else at some point in the near future if they wish to disassemble it and change the uh, 40 gig ID drive to a CF flash drive or some other form of media they're more than welcome to do that but um, for me the most cost effective way to get this back up and running uh, was the six pound hard drive uh, it's running, running. it has installed 8.6 at the moment, um, I was going to put 9.2 on it and then 10.3, it um, doesn't matter what I do, every time I try to write to the hard drive this thing just crashes out. Um, I've tried some software utilities to see what's going on and every time it tries to write to the hard drive, boom, gone, machine crashes out. So uh, hopefully it is just the hard drive and it's not anything else, um, but uh, we'll see. So um, I'm going to re-watch the video and then I'm going to start taking this machine apart. So first things first, let's get the battery out of it. I don't want to leave a battery in there in case there's some charge in it and it causes some issues later. Let's flip it over, lift out the keyboard which pops out with the two clips and underneath we can see most of the inside of the machine. I'll then remove the airport carrier tray and the keyboard itself and that will get us a bit deeper into the machine. There is our hard drive. It's so clear to see, but so hard to get to. I'm gonna to have to remove just about everything here, including the screen, just to get to this. On the back of the machine, there are six screws to remove. Two near the hinges that are quite long, and four short ones near the battery. Each of those are Torque 8 screws which are quite difficult to find a fitment for. I also pop out the CD-ROM drive because there's a hidden small little screw there that will need to be taken out. Three more screws on the front now and the front cover is almost ready to pop off. Mm -hmm. 
just need to pop out the ribbon cable for the trackpad and I'll also disconnect the speaker cable because that is also part of the front cover. Okay, we're getting somewhere now, but next I'll need to remove the DVD drive stroke CD-ROM drive from the machine as this is sitting over the top of parts that need to come off. Now that's out of the way, the next item on the list will be the modem which is under this tin foil lid which is held down with several screws. I'll now start tackling some of the hinge screws and the plastic orange cover that you can see by the hinge. There are several screws in that as well that all need to be removed which will ultimately enable me to disconnect the screen completely from the unit. I also have to pop out the video connector and the backlight connector. We'll talk about the backlight connector as time goes on quite a bit. And this final screw on the right hand hinge just needs to come out and once that is the screen I should be able to completely disconnect and put that down out of the way. The machine is almost completely bare now but there's still more that needs to come off to get to the hard drive. Hooray! And I'm down to the hard drive. So I've essentially disassembled the entire computer. As you can see, it's laying in bits all over the place everywhere. But most importantly, I've been keeping a record of all the screws and where they go. And as you can see, there's an awful lot of them. And I've got to say, without this video from the 8-bit guy, I would have been absolutely lost. Well, I say that, I've got to swap the drive and then I've got to put it all back together again. So um, let me swap the hard drive and see what happens.
it's not keen. Let's have a closer look. Okay, so that was a little bit fiddly, getting the backlight power switch back in. Um, it's like a tiny, tiny, tiny miniaturized 80 power connector, just like one side of it where it's got a um, bunch of pins and the connector is slightly offset from center. I was trying to push it in centrally. I needed to be a little bit further back in order to engage it properly. Um, it's a tiny, tiny connector and I, you know, my eyes are shot at the best of times. So it took me a bit of time to uh, get my head inside and try and understand what was going on. But uh, the backlight power supply is in. If I uh, end up turning it on and there's no display, I'll know that the backlight power supply isn't in and I'll have to start the whole process again. So uh, I'll probably get to a stage where I can try and boot this up um, and still have reasonable access to this. So maybe the front plastic cover itself won't be on. We'll see as time goes on. Anyway, modem. Hey, we've got some noise. Nothing on the screen. So potentially that backlight connector isn't in correctly. So guess what? It's all got to come apart yet again. Frustrating as it is, I have had to take the machine back apart again. I've got it all the way back down to a motherboard, and what I've discovered is exactly what I suspected. The backlight plug that pushes into the motherboard, which I've described as being particularly tiny, has actually got bent pins in it. That's me when I've pushed the connector back in. I tried straightening the connectors, but my first attempt ended up breaking a pin. What I have found is a replacement motherboard. So that is in the post, should be with me any day soon. And I'll have another go at putting this back together. This time I'll pay closer attention to the backlight. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and maybe leave a comment.